All right, everybody, thank you for coming back for our second hour of our special CWAP class. Coach Dylan wanted to say some words as well. Hi, uh, yeah, so we're just going to be restarting the feed over here on Facebook Live. Uh, we're very glad to have Dr. Brian Stoops here teaching, um, I believe this is some new material from you. Yeah. Uh, so a new take on it. Uh, yeah, just, that's, that, that's yeah, good. A new take a on cool, it. A cool, yeah. fun thing. So yeah. I'm going to jump in when Brian asks me to jump in. I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so have fun learning along with Dr. Brian, and uh, I will see you soon. Fantastic. Thank you. All, all right. right, so we're back at it. Um, all right, so our first hour, everybody, is we were really focused on what I call the ground domain. And when you get all those basics that we spent that hour, you really understand them, what that leads to is the, the ability to play those freelance rounds or those, those kind of C-lot, you know, uh, play rounds that we were experimenting with at the very end. So ground versus ground, you're the stand-up player versus the ground player, you're the ground player versus the stand-up player, and then you can freelance. And in my C-lot core curriculum, um, so it's around the fourth level, of eight or nine, I think there's eight levels. It's around the fourth level where at that point you've learned all those basics and for the ground domain, we just, we have freelance rounds and they get longer and longer and longer. Like I think at Purple Ekit, it's 45 seconds of each of the four. The next level is like one minute and then it builds, okay? So we're leaving at least as far as beginning the rest of your journey for what we're going to look at tonight, we're kind of, we're pausing the focus on the ground domain. We still know it. We under, we have an overview of what it is. Now we're getting into our bread and butter stand up C-lot technique. So we start with um, some different responses off the jab. Um, I'm going to bring Coach Dylan in. We're going to go over these. And I'm going to go over these with a partner, but I'm also going to speak to something like Ivan is on the Zoom right now. He's been training with me in my public classes for many, many weeks here. We're, we're, we're going to learn this. We're also going to kind of address the elephant in the room. Okay. So we start left. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Can I tilt the camera up a little bit? Sure. Okay. We're not yeah. focused on the feet for us. We're not. We're not. It's upper box. That's a good step. Because I'm, right I'm so my head's going to be yeah, really. Yeah, you're tough. taller than me, which is pretty much the also whole the office. whole world. So all right. Um, yeah. So thank you. Okay. So we're going to start left lead to left lead, orthodox versus orthodox, and we're going to have several responses to the jab. So slow motion jab. Split entry, then this this could be an eye jab, it could be a punch. I tend to do vertical punches based on my background, but it could be a palm down western punch. It could be a hari mal, which is a palm strike with your fingernails, also kind of getting any bonus scratching. But that's the first response is the split, split entry. Okay, and that's to be perfectly frank, that's my favorite one. That's usually the one that I default to. That doesn't mean that it has to be your favorite. I just like to share my preferences with people. Okay, so that's the split. The next one, Jeff, is gonna be the slide. So this is a sliding leverage attack. Notice, I'm gonna have you throw your punch in slow motion and not connect, because I'm gonna do this wrong, okay? Notice that we're not doing this, because this is whomever gets there first. Right? This, I'm not making contact. That's wrong. He jabs me and I cut the line. Okay? So that's slide. Split, slide. The next one is Seco. We want to be really careful. Lead hand guides it into the rear elbow. And in, in the reality where people flick out a fast jab, it, it's I'm like I'm going for that. I'm trying to just guide it. Bah! And I want to just bust the knuckles in that moment. But we tend to demo it now slow as this. But in that moment of expression, it's really just kind of that. You're just moving the line into the elbow and hoping to, to break a knuckle or two. So split, slide, seco, uh, vertical gunting. Rear hand puts a lid on it. 
lead hand comes up and mouses the crazy bow. Okay, so again, just that. Then I come up and I mouse that. That's vertical good attack. Okay, so right hand, if I'm in a left lead, right hand parries, left hand comes up and mouses it. Diagonal good attack. Here, okay, now that is a moment of, like Coach Dylan has noted that I use this term, what I call training artifice. Nobody's going to really stand there and admire, gosh, that was a cool diagonal good day, okay? What you're really looking to do is that, move them offline. If he wants to throw, throw that again, if he wants to throw his rear hand, yeah, see, he's got to come back over, like, come back all the way from that side. Okay, and frankly, the, the diagonal gunting is really good for throw number six, the kinjit, which we're going to look at. So sorry to break that down for everybody. Rear hand parries, lead hand lays over the top. Okay, so that's all the diagonal gunting is. And I'm just doing that at speed, right? And I wouldn't leave my hand out there. I would move him, right? Because I want to affect that one. Okay, I'll bring you back in a moment. Yep. So, what's the issue that everybody's dealing with right now? We're, in the, we're still hip deep in the pandemic. That is, that is a non-political statement, by the way, right? Our goal right now is to keep everybody safe and healthy and also to be able to continue our practice as martial arts, period. So a lot of people are training by themselves. A lot of people don't have access to a training partner or if they do have access to a training partner, it's a family member who maybe doesn't train martial arts. And as much as they want to help you, that family member has limited ability to do so. So the last 13 weeks of 14, uh, 14 weeks of teaching public Zoom classes, I've really put my finger on the need to show you ways of working on all of this if you don't have a partner. And that's going to have to be good enough for right now until we can all get together again safely for traditional face-to-face -face classes. So everybody put your left side in front. The jab's coming in. You wanna move your head offline. Your right hand puts a lid on it as your left hand goes inside. And you choose the shape of this. Remember, this is split. And when we split, we don't just wanna do that. We don't wanna gamble the health of our face on our hand speed. We want to move our head out at least a little bit, okay? I always slot my bicep when I shout about, because that's what I want to do to the person's arm. Unless they're like a Wing Chun or some other arts kind of practitioner, most people in our society aren't used to getting their arms slapped up. So not only do I want to hit them in that moment of interception with the split entry, I want to slap their arm really, really hard, okay? So that's how we would train the split in a left lead. Because remember, this is the feed, right? This is what you would be seeing. So your right hand goes outside, your left hand goes inside, and it's simultaneous. Right hand puts a lid on it as the left hand attacks. That's the split. The slide, your right hand rides over the top. And remember, that's a sliding leverage attack. It would just cut that line and go into the eyes or the throat, okay? In my children's program where I don't teach finger jabs, I teach that as a, as a chung choy. So you just do vertical fist, but it's the same kind of already super quick, lightning quick. So jab me, boom, it's that. Okay, so ra rather because I, I have a lot of data about how nasty finger jabs are, so I don't teach finger jabs in my kids' program. I just teach they, the same technique, they just do it with a vertical fist. Okay, thank you. All right, so that's your slide. Just right hand cuts over. And see, I'm not getting lazy. I'm not doing this, right? That's horrible form. That's just... Like, treat it like somebody who actually wants to take your head off with that jab and protect yourself with that, that other hand, okay? The Seiko, left hand guides it into the right elbow. And remember, in reality, it's going to be more like you're just trying to, as it's zoom, zooming in towards your face, pop, 
you just kind of want to pad it off course into your elbow. But a lot of time we train it like that just to get the idea. But again, a, a fast jab, a jab that flicks, boom, you're just going to try to intercept that line and reroute it into your elbow. So they break some knuckles, okay? Um, vertical gunte. Again, move your head slightly offline. Parry with your rear hand, your right hand, and then just come up underneath with your left hand. And mouse, boom, that crazy bump. You gotta feel it to appreciate it. It hurts a lot, <laughs> okay? Um, you just kinda, I know that's awkward. You literally just raise up, boom, and just come up and, and hit that area with the knuckles, okay? Um, and then diagonal gunting starts off the same as the vertical gunting, but I'm just gonna lay. Because remember, what you wanna do is this is the feed, by the time they're done, you wanna have moved them over here when you do that diagonal gunting. So that if they wanna hit you with this cross, they gotta come back over the top to throw. Okay, so split, slide, seco, means elbow, vertical gunting, diagonal gunting. And for you to really get the most out of this session, I stipulate that the best optimal situation is having a partner and being able to train with that partner on a regular basis. Not only having a partner, but a partner with a similar level of martial arts background as yourself. I stipulate that's the ideal situation. However, that is not the situation that a lot of us find ourselves in. So how can we still make gains in our practice while we wait for that optimal, optimal environment to become safe again. And for now, it's to Cambong it, to do the motions in the air, because that's actually very traditional in terms of a C-lock perspective. And we'll talk about that. Okay, so now first level, we have six throws that we need to learn, six seminal basics. And just because of the reality and the time that I have, I'm gonna show them to you and I'm gonna go over this. This is all being recorded. Um, it'll all go on my YouTube channel. You can watch it to your heart's content. I gotta try to squeeze in what I wanna squeeze in from an instructional standpoint. So like, like everything, do your best, okay? So number one, leg sweep in front of the body. And then from here, I would continue driving, sweep this foot out, and foot. we're gonna take it that far. Leg sweep in front of the body. So one more time. See how I come, I end up in front of him. Right here, everybody look at my right leg. Technique one is that. That is really the focus of technique one. Leg sweep in front of the body. I'm going to lose a beat going after that other foot. So we simulate a knee to the face, and then we go and get that foot. And then we're ready to sweep that out. That's technique one, okay? Beset Dalam in Indonesian, uh, Silhid in Filipino, or English, leg sweep in front of the body. And if you can remember the the original terminology cool if you can't remember it in english if you can't give the technique your own name that will help you remember what it is and frankly if you do that please share the name with me and if i like it if i use it i will always give you credit for originating that name because the more tools that i have to teach people this material the better okay so it's Several of my students over the years have named certain techniques, and whenever I use that name, I always give the person credit, because why not? They came up with it. Anyways, technique two. Look at my foot. Inside, foot sweep, and I collapse. There are follow-ups from here. Inside foot sweep, sapu dalam in Indonesian, or walisk in Filipino. 
there. Okay. Um, and just a quick note on that one. I you can you might be able to tell that one. I like to cheat a little bit. I do a diagonal dente into that anchor. You've got to anchor either under the armpit or on the hip for this one to work. That makes that foot really light. Okay. No anchor. This isn't just because Coach Dylan is really strong. He really is. No anchor, that will never work. Anchor, this becomes super light, okay? So you have to have that anchor. So that's technique two, inside foot sweep. But again, even though there's all this stuff going on, look at my foot. This is really the important part of technique two, inside foot sweep, okay? I'm gonna put you over here for this. Technique three, outside foot sweep. Does everybody see the foot? my foot? Okay, we can step back we're, gonna, we're gonna take this light. Back this, downward diagonal pressure with my hand, rising diagonal pressure with my foot. So he took the fall, there's really no reason for him to take another one. Because what I really want to get good at is putting people in that position, what, what I call shoulder line control. Okay, from here, downward diagonal pressure, just stay where you're at, please, with this hand, rising diagonal pressure with this foot performed together. It's like a gun thing with your body. That's it. Okay, so it's outside foot sweep. Indonesian, Sapuluar, in Filipino, Wallisk. In English, outside foot sweep. Once again, if you come up with some super cool name, please let me know what that name is. And if I like it, I'll always give you credit. Technique four, let's put you more over here. Outside foot sweep. There. Oh, I'm so sorry, I said foot sweep. Outside uh, leg sweep behind the body or outside leg sweep, excuse me. So there's pressure already. Leg sweep. This has a very, if you have an Aikido background, like a Riminagi clothesline type of an energy. Okay? So think about what we've done in the first four techniques. Okay? Technique one, a leg sweep in front of the body. We're not going to go any further. Technique two, an inside foot sweep. Technique three, an outside foot sweep. And then move over here a little bit. I'm not gonna drop you anyways, but technique four, a leg sweep behind the body. Okay, so those are our first four basics. Then we add two more. Head and arm throw, or Puder Kabbalah in Indonesian, or Labai in Filipino. So we're gonna do this really gently. I like to split. I open them up, I come into this elbow to the brachial. Here's my anchor, my underhook, my knee, my shoulder line control, lift the arm and throw the head through. Head and arm throw, head and arm throw. At its basic though, this is really lifting this and throwing his head through at its essence. That's all a head and arm throw is, okay? And then I told you earlier, I like the diagonal gunting for over here, for this one. This is, because we, we, the expression used to be, show them your palm, sorry, Jen again. Show them your palm, hit them with it as you step in and kinge it, okay? Kinge it is compression. So one fall is uh, sufficient. Here, you can, so this is Kinjit Siko compressing with the elbow. This is windmill Kinjit. They're both good. And I just compress him until he trips over my right leg. But one fall is sufficient. Okay, so thank you. Okay, I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring Coach Dylan back later. Okay, so in my curriculum, first level, yellow ikit. Those six throws against an orthodox 
somebody in the left lead throwing their jab, okay? That's in the section called basic offense, basic offense. Then the very last section, kembong in those movements, okay? So technique one, and I'll explain, I'll give you some guidelines for kembong in. Technique one, leg sweep in front of the body. Technique two, inside foot sweep. Technique three, outside foot sweep. Technique four, leg sweep or leg trip behind the body. Technique five, head and arm throw. Technique six, kinjit. Compression, okay? Now, guidelines for a Kembongin. Your Kembongin, I, and I was just saying this yesterday during my weekly CELOC class, but it's important to note this. Your Kembongin can exist bet between two extremes. You can do only the movements that you would actually do if you were doing the technique. Okay, so let's just take technique one because I spend so much time using it as an example. Split entry, straight arm bar as I step in front, right foot does the sill hit, right knee uh, hits the face, take the outside leg, and then if I wanted him to fall, I would sweep that out, okay? Split entry, step in in front with the straight arm bar, sill hit or beset, knee the face, take the far foot, sweep it out. That's, I'm doing all the movements that I would do if I was actually doing the technique minus the partner. That's one extreme, okay? The other extreme, and I know <laughs> based on the average martial artist work ethic, I know you're not gonna be satisfied with this, but you need to understand this. This is the other extreme, ready? That's it, that's technique one. Because technique one is leg sweep in front of the body. So I would have to count that as acceptable at a bare minimum based on the definition of a Kambongan. But here's really the thing. If those are the two extremes, your Kambongan can exist anywhere in between those. So what you might do is stylize what you're doing with your hands as you express that technique. Now, if I actually did that with a partner, like how would that even work with his hand? Well, I don't know, and that's not the point. That was a more stylized version of technique one as a Kambongan, okay? All right, so you can Kambongan your entries, you can kambong in those six techniques. Second level, right lead, super slow, jab me, split, jab me again, slide, jab me again, slow, seco, jab me again, vertical gunting, jab me again, diagonal gunting. This is second level. Now, I'm fighting a southpaw. So they're in a right lead. They're firing their jab. I have the same methodology that I had against the lead hand on the other side of the body. Uh, over here. Right lead, jab me. Technique one, leg sweep in front of the body. Jab me. Technique two, Inside foot sweep. Technique three. Outside, definitely not gonna drop them that close to the wall, but you could outside foot sweep, right? Downward diagonal pressure, rising diagonal pressure with the foot. Um, a little more space, even though I don't have any plans to send you to the ground. Technique four, 
Leg sweep. You don't need to take falls. Okay. Um, guitar. I'm just trying to technique four. Leg sweep behind the body. Okay. Technique five. Head and arm throw. Right. Puder Kabbalah. Technique six. Hinge it. Okay. So thank you. It's the same. Six in a right lead. So whichever one you feel like you have the best grasp on, try to kambongan it in a right lead and a left lead. Do that now. Any of those techniques. Even if you just barely understood what it was, express it in the air. Okay, very nice. Um, I hate to cut you off because everybody looks really good, but it's <laughs> time is finite, unfortunately, at least we think so. Um, so we're trying to squeeze a lot of things in here, okay? Um, we're gonna skip the Silhig series because that's all these different attacks off of which you can find technique one. We're gonna go to the Car Sock series. The Car Sock series, is a prefix series. Super slow, because I don't want shin clashes. Keep me here. Karasak, boom. And so leg shield to technique one. Kick me again. Karasak, leg shield to technique two, and so on. Okay, so in the interest of time, everything, all six that I just showed you, we're taking it off the leg shield, okay? And for everybody, if you think about a leg shield like that, where you're gonna eat the kick on your shin, we only wanna do that if the only other alternative, don't move, is to actually take the kick on the outside of your thigh. Like a little bit of shin clash with reinforced, like you're flexing your feet, that's better than actually eating the kick because one or two of those and you're done, all right? And, and it's not only the Thais that kick like that. The Cambodians kick like that. The Malaysians kick like that. It's a very common kick. Rear leg, your power leg, and I'm just ah, going to use my shin and destroy the mobility system. So we only car sock with like, we're going to eat it on our shin when the only other alternative is to actually take the kick. We, when he kicks me, I want to assume, I want to stick that out there. I want to assume God the throat or the eyes. And for training, you can actually touch the sternum and then move in and do your thing. Okay. So thank you. I'll be back. So everybody try, let's say you were working on technique one and technique two. It's fine. Now I want you to think leg shield, come in and take whatever technique you were working on. Leg shield, inside foot, whichever one you were working on. Leg shield, head and arm throw. Try that, so you car a sock, that's the, that's the leg shield. But you stick your right hand, soon got out there. So express that, boom, and then come in and Kambong in one of those techniques that we were just working on. Let me see everybody try that with a couple of a couple of the techniques. Okay, beautiful time. Okay, so at this point in my curriculum, we've also added two other variables for the head and arm throw, okay? Um, jab me. If I come in, whichever side I knee with, the other leg is going over.
to take the head and arm throw with the leg. So it's the Puder Kabbalah, it's technique five, done with your leg. And you always precede it by a knee. Really, it's a knee to the groin problem, okay? Um, because what you've got going, I'm not gonna need anymore. What you, what you got going on there is your foot has to return to the ground, right? Bop. So you use that momentum to haul their head down. It's always the opposite of the trigger. So right lean, jab me. It's always the opposite. So if I need butt with my right, my left leg would go over for the throw. And then if I need with my left, my right leg would go over. So we have the six basics that I've gone over for you. Now we have a seventh, which is that variation on the head and arm throw, the one with the leg or the leg assisted pooter, okay? The last of our basic offense, let's back here, is another variation on the head and arm throw, but here I'm going to wrap, turn around. This can be either a guillotine, which chokes, or a face lock, which is really nasty, okay? Then I smash his face into my knee and I throw his head, through, okay? So one fall is sufficient. So that one I tend to call the wrap, smash, and throw variation on the Puder Cabal. So for everybody, let's just clarify everything that we have before the next 10 minutes go by. Jab me. Technique one, leg sweep in front of the body. I'm not even gonna finish it. I want you to understand at its core what these techniques are. Technique two, inside foot sweep. Technique three, outside foot sweep. Technique four, leg sweep behind the body, okay? Technique five, head and arm throw, I would use my hand, okay? Technique six in the beginning thank you, is kinjit. Then we add seven is going to be head and arm throw with the leg, but I'm not going to take it. In the interest of time, you already have a rep of it fully expressed. And then head and arm throw, where I wrap, smash, and throw, okay? So here is the method to my madness. You have, you get those, ba those six basics minus the two additional variants on the pooter at the first level against the orthodox uh, stance jab. The second level, you're learning those same six basics against the southpaw jab. The third level, we add in the, uh, the Silhik series, which I don't really have time to get into. Again, that all ends with technique one. But for this particular offense, we have the ability, for example, left lead, to give me like jab cross. Maybe I split and I horizontal contain into technique five. Okay, so um, the third level, we're not so interested in which, which lead they're in. It's, there's two sides of the body, the left side, and the left side can be in the front, or the left side can be in the rear. The right side can be in the front, or the right side can be in the rear. Fourth level, we do the car sock. So we take all eight of those variables off the leg shield. Then we have other modalities. Um, I'm going to go to the edge of this shot right here. Come here. You're going to work on this line. You start in a left, actually come on a little closer. I know that's tight, but this will actually get reps unlike in my living room academy. Jab me. Okay. Technique one. I do technique one. You step back into a right lead and you fire your jab again. Boom. And just take that momentum and step back. Boom. Good. Okay. So this is, and then we would do four, and then if we had time, he would brush me back. So that's another, I think that's purple ikit. That's another methodology. We take all eight basics 
all eight basics. Brownie kit, do who button with me? We have this motion generator, right? Most of the time we think about this as from Filipino martial arts, but remember what Mafalindo, Malaysian, Filipino, Indonesian. Now, he's always hitting in with his right hand. So a little slower. I can always count on that timing, right? So I could go through and I could, that was number two. I just jumped to that. I could always count on that timing if I'm struggling or as my level increases, I just get selfish and I start finding out of technique one. I start finding the techniques within any moment of the flow. But we're taking the same eight basics. Then we have Silat Sombrata. Okay, so Silat Sombrata, there's two versions of it, Jamie. And then, so technique one, but I don't drop you. Stand up and put me in any C-lock position. Boom, maybe there, that's, yeah. There, okay, so like, te like technique four, yeah. right? And then I come back, I, I went back to technique one, but we're going back and forth, back and forth. That's one version of C-lock sombrata. The other version, the version that you might do if you're stuck at home and let's say you have only a family member, no offense to that family member, they want to help you, but they don't have a martial arts background. Jab me, okay? Technique two, but you step out of it. Great. Technique six, but you step out of it. Good, and I'm gonna flow again. Technique one, and you just keep going. Wherever they move, you just keep adapting and putting them in compromised positions, okay? So that's, um, most of the methodologies that we use, because our goal, thank you, our goal is to own those eight basics, okay? As Guru Inosanto has explained many, many times, and this story is not disrespectful. You have to understand this story. It's like it's about the pioneers of, of Silat practitioners in America. In the mid 80s, 1980s, when Silat was, and a lot of it is due to Guru Inosanto, I'm not just saying that because he's, he's my instructor. Um, the American Silat community, they were doing their jurus, that's their upper body forms. They had this posture. We used to call it taking your pulse. Um, and then later it changed. But anyways, the feed was always right hand punch, from the taking your pulse position. And in the mid eighties, again, as it's been told to me, I was a little kid at that time, um, as it's been explained to me, the American Sea Lock community could do a million and one te amazing techniques as long as it was the take your pulse into this traditional feed, okay? The minute that they had a, like a boxer in an orthodox lead, forget it, okay? So, Hopefully you see the method to my madness, okay? We started against an orthodox lead with the jab, like one of the most common attacks. Western boxing obviously has it. Thai boxing obviously has it. Um, most everybody in their must sabat has it. Um, Jeet Kune Do and so on, okay? Um, and you can see all the different methodologies that we're trying to really use to own those eight basics. Leg sweep in front of the body, inside foot sweep, outside foot sweep, leg sweep behind the body, head and arm throw with the hand, Kinjit, either Kinjit Seiko or windmill, Kinjit, um, head and arm throw, leg assisted, and head and arm throw where you wrap, smash, and throw, okay? Are those everything there is to know about C-lot sweeps and throws and takedowns? Absolutely not. Are you way ahead of the game 
if you know a million and one ways to get into those eight techniques on both sides of the body, absolutely you are. Okay, so comprehensive Kambangan is something that's emerged in the last few weeks as I've really, number, number one, I finished recording my CLOC curriculum in its entirety. And I've been trying to kind of respond to all of the Zoom teaching that I've been doing, where most of the people in my classes are training without a partner. So in a nutshell, because I am going to run out of time very quickly here, the time always goes too fast. In a nutshell, comprehensive Kambangan is your attempt to give an overview of the entire system in a Kambangan. So I'm going to do a sample one and I'm going to say the same thing that I said yesterday in my public CLOC class. My goal in all of this, and this goes beyond CLOT, but, but right now CLOT is what we're doing. My goal in all this is not to produce carbon copies of me. That's not the goal. This is going to come off as maybe a little life coachy, but oh well. My goal is to help you find your Kambangan. Only you can do your Kambangan as you're going to express it. Okay. So what I'm about to do, I'm doing it off the top of my head because I need to reverse engineer my own comprehensive Kambangan. And I haven't gone back and actually made up and kind of choreographed. I'll actually, I'll use that word. You would kind of choreograph and plan. It doesn't need to be every movement, but what thematically you're going to be doing. But what I want you to understand, what I'm about to do, this is not the teacher's edition of the textbook with the right answer. Well, I'm the only one who has the right answers in the back of the book. That's not the situation. The situation is to get, give you methodology to um, discover your own Kambang. Are we good? Yeah, no, okay. I'm just checking on it. All right, and I'm just checking because I'm I'm no, you're great. You're fine. Oh, you just okay. I just faces it up or sometimes. No worries. Cause because when I go 10 minutes over in my own living room, which I do every time I teach, it doesn't matter, but I'm in a I'm in somebody else's space. I'll, so I'll do this. Gotcha. So, gotcha. so Brian, we have two options. We have a very long cane yeah. that we pull you off the stage with, or we've got a trapdoor to alligators. Whichever one you want to do. Okay. The, the alligator thing sounds a little more final. So that's what's under the maybe the cane. Okay. So um, I'm sorry. So very important, everybody. Seriously, um, you have to discover your own Kimball. Okay. So I'm gonna. There are many different ways you could do it. Part of it could also be to actually verbalize what you're doing as you're doing it. So we might start ground mobility exercises. Wait for that. Thank you so much. Ground mobility exercises, right? Now I'm the ground player versus a ground player. Now I'm the stand up player versus the ground player. Moving on to basic offense against an orthodox jab. Then to my car sock series. I won't go through everything. <laughs> Just too much stuff. Then we didn't cover it. Sawanda so series. Wrap the arms, number one. Sawanda so series. Throw it behind the forearm, number two. Sawanda so series. Throw it under your arm, number three. Sawanda so series. The arm cross fails, so I drop into my Hari Mao. 
and I take down. Okay. Um, I'm going to run out of time. I just went through an overview and I know that was very short. Um, what I'm looking for is you would actually put together a Kembongan that is the summation of your understanding of the curriculum in its entirety. And that's really hard um, to do in an hour long session, but I gave you an awful lot of the building blocks and why we do what we do and frankly, why we do what we do <laughs> and why we do it in the way that we do it and why it's so important and how that's gonna build foundation. Okay, so comprehensive Kambangan is gonna be everything, but you don't necessarily have to do every variable, every variable in every series, but it's gonna be a way of you solo expressing, again, a summation of the curriculum as a whole. And we're gonna kind of wind this down. I don't know if uh, Coach Dylan or Coach Aubrey have any like concluding remarks. Kembongan is both a verb and a noun, okay? I can say, all right, you know, so-and-so, student X, you just learned car sock series. Kembong in that. Kembong in that. You can use it like a verb. I can also say, after I've observed people, you know, Coach Abra, your, your Kembong in looks really, really, really nice, Thank right? You. Really, really beautiful expression. Um, and remember what I said, everybody, the two poles, right? The two extremes. And hopefully this is empowering. It can be pure combat. Only the movements that I do when I actually do the technique or a super stylized even with movements that you didn't do, I don't remember spinning kick, but whatever you want, okay? Um, and hopefully you, <laughs> those guidelines are empowering. And again, I wanted to share with you what I shared with you. Again, bare minimum, that's technique one. Bare minimum, that's technique two. Bare minimum. That's technique three, four, five, six. Okay, and again, I know most of the martial artists that I come in contact with, that's usually in conflict with their work ethic. And I'm not sharing that to make you lazy. I'm sharing that to really, like, that's it? Yeah, that's it as a bare minimum. So now, how would you like to layer in additional movements to your expression, knowing that the, the minimal acceptable performance standards are so simple? That's more what I'm trying to show you, okay? So to wrap this up, for me, comprehensive Kambongan will become a methodology so that the people who are studying my curriculum and earning rank and trying to work their way through the curriculum under me, if you are stuck in a situation where you have no training partner, that you still have a way to start learning the system. And the most important thing Kembongan is supposed to give you, Kembongan is, is, should be eliminating doubt. Is this right? Did I do that right? As you move through and you develop your Kambong, and we want to move away from questions like that. We want to move away from doubt. And Kambong should empower you to just perpetually express yourself through movement with those seminal C-Lot basics that we develop throughout the curriculum. Okay, so 
we're gonna we're gonna bow this out and formally end my session here super quickly. Um, you know, if you are interested, anybody in formalizing your training relationship with me anywhere in the world, I have students as far away as Australia right now, legitimately earning rank. I don't give them anything. Um, it's Stoops, my last name, O M A L C dot com, like Stoops Online Martial Arts Learning Community. Stoops O M A L C dot com. You can get some more information about what distance training looks like with me now. Um, and I have a really good group, and they work really hard, and they earn everything that they get. Because again, if the if if you're not an online person, I hear that all the time. Well, I'm not really an online kind of person. I respect that, but if the alternative is that we don't have any martial arts in our lives, well, that, that's simply unacceptable. And let's leverage the technology that we have to move our practice forward right now, again, until we can all come together safely. Last thing, this is a little bit short notice, but I'm sure with the right kind of person you could thrive. This weekend is my first virtual Filipino martial arts trainer certification weekend. Um, this team quite literally was gonna help me. We were gonna have live events in New York City, Southern California, and Chicago. And that was not a pipe dream. We had locations and dates, and then the pandemic made that impossible. So uh, we're gonna do a virtual Filipino martial arts trainer certification weekend. Uh, the URL for that is virtualfmatrainer.com. So virtual FMA, like Filipino martial arts, virtualfmatrainer.com. That's going on this weekend. If you're not available this weekend, there will still be opportunities to interact with those materials after the fact. Other than that, I'm super grateful um, for Coach Abra and Coach Dylan to host me in this really beautiful space. Um, I love my family and I love my apartment and I like my living room, but teaching in another space besides Family Martial Arts Academy Living Room Edition right now is, is really, really nice. So I'm very grateful to be here and um, Saga Action Arts and what Coach Dylan and Coach Abra have built, um, extraordinary. And I can't say enough about them as martial artists and as people. So if you're not subscribed to their channel, go to their events, train with them, um, especially if you are a performer looking to augment your ability to move um, and have people notice that ability to move, um, there's nobody better. So check them out, okay? Otherwise, man, thanks so much everybody for tuning in. Let's formally end my session here. Again, we acknowledge all the martial arts that influence us, no matter the curricular area that we're in. So right hand makes a fist, left hand goes over it, Chinese. Right hand fist goes up to your forehand, left hand over your heart, Filipino. Tie is right here, really easy. From this position, your left hand makes a table for your right hand, abbreviated Indonesian. You just drop your left hand by your side, make a fist with your right hand, tap your chest and go palm down at your side. French and Dog Brothers, and then Japanese, we're just gonna give a little bow and keep our eyes up. Um, I'm gonna end the recording. I don't know if uh, their Coach Dylan or Coach Abra wanna say anything else.